Hi everybody, today we're going to be determining the key features of a quadratic graph. First we need to discuss what key features we are actually looking for. The first one is going to be your table, which is a list of x and y coordinates to plot on your graph. Then we're going to take a look at the x-intercepts, also known as roots, solutions, or zeros. This is where your graph crosses the x-axis. Next, we're going to look at the y-intercept, where the graph crosses the y-axis, written as a coordinate or in terms of y equals. Or, we're going to look at the vertex, which is also known as the turning point. The turning point is where two or more lines meet and is written as a coordinate point. Now, the vertex will also determine whether there is a maximum or a minimum. Your maximum is going to be your highest point on your graph, and your minimum will be your lowest. This is always going to be in terms of y equals. Next, we're going to determine the axis of symmetry, which is a line of symmetry for the graph. This is typically going to be in written in terms of x equals, or also known as the x-coordinate of your vertex. Next, we're going to be talking about concavity, which is the direction of the curve. So this will either state that your graph is being opened up or opening down. To continue on with our key features, we will be discussing the domain, which is a set of x values that define the function or relation, as well as the range, which is a set of y values that define the function or relation. Both the domain and range can be written in set notation or interval notation, which we will discuss later on in the video. We will also discuss the horizontal shift, which is a translation of the graph from left to right based on your vertex, as well as the vertical shift, which translates your graph up or down based on the vertex from the parent function. So your parent function has a vertex of 0, 0 at the origin, and your horizontal shift and vertical shift can both be determined based on whether or not the vertex is 0, 0 or a different point. Then we will be discussing reflections, which is a transformation that mirrors your image across the x-axis. A dilation is the transformation that makes your graph either bigger or smaller. If your a value is between 0 and 1, then that is known as becoming wider, or your a value is greater than 1, then that is known as becoming narrow. We will also be discussing the increasing interval in which your interval demonstrates as your x increases, then your y value also increases. And remember, your increasing intervals are written in terms of your x values. Lastly, we will be discussing the decreasing interval that demonstrates as x increases, y decreases, and is also written in terms of x. Let's take a look at example one. Here you are given the equation y equals x squared minus 4x. I have already graphed it for you. However, it is still extremely important to write your table of values. If you go into your calculator and you go under y equals, you should type in the equation x squared minus 4x and then go to second graph in order to get the table. To ensure that you have the correct coordinate points, you want to look for the pattern under your y-coordinates. If you notice, the y-coordinates here begin at 5, then go 0, negative 3, negative 4, and then repeat negative 3, 0, and 5. This way, you will clearly pinpoint your vertex, as well as ensure that you have all the correct coordinate points for your graph. Now let's take a look at our x-intercepts. Remember, your x-intercepts show where your graph crosses the x-axis. Also, you can refer to it where your y-coordinate is equal to zero. I've also circled it on your graph so you can clearly pinpoint the roots. Next, we're going to look at the y-intercept, which in this case is also zero, zero, because this is where it crosses the y-axis or where your x-coordinate is equal to zero. Next, we're going to look at the vertex, which is the point two, negative four. I have circled it on the graph. This is where your graph changes direction, also known as your turning point. From here, we can also determine that there is a minimum value, which is y equals negative 4, as well as an axis of symmetry, which is the equation x equals 2. 
The axis symmetry has been drawn on the graph for you to see that if you fold the left hand side of the graph onto the right hand side of the graph, they will be equal. Now, based on your vertex, we can determine the horizontal shift and the vertical shift. Remember, the parent function vertex starts off at 0, 0. Our current vertex on this equation is 2, negative 4. So that means there was a horizontal shift of 2 units to the right and a vertical shift of 4 units down. Next, we're going to take a look at our domain. If you take your graph and squish it onto the x-axis, you will see that the entire x-axis will be defined under this equation. So in set notation, we will write it with French braces, and it is read the set of x such that all real numbers. Or you can also say that your domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. In interval notation, we will use open brackets because infinity is known as excluded. Now let's focus on the range. In this case, your minimum value again was y equals to negative four. So if you take your graph and you squish it onto the y-axis, you will notice that all of your values of the graph are above negative four. So in set notation, we will write the set of y such that y is greater than or equal to negative four. Or in interval notation, we would put a closed bracket on negative four because it is included, and then this will go up until positive infinity, which gets an open brace or a parenthesis around it because that is excluded. Next, we will determine the concavity and or which direction the graph is open. In this case, our arrowheads are pointing up, so this is concave up. This also shows us that we do not have a reflection because our parent function is normally concave up. This also does not have a dilation because our a value is equal to one. Next, we're gonna talk about decreasing values. In this case, as you read your graph from left to right, the values are decreasing. So in interval notation, it will be open parentheses from negative infinity to positive two with a closed bracket because two is included and that is where our vertex begins. Then after the point hits x equaling to two, it begins to increase. So this interval will be the closed bracket of two all the way to positive infinity because it just keeps going to the right towards our positive values. Now let's look at example two. Here we have y equals negative x squared minus 2x plus 8. Our table values of again, we can look for our pattern and simply look for our x-intercepts. Here the x-intercepts are negative 4, 0 and 2, 0. Your y-intercept in this case is at the point 0, 8, which has been highlighted both on the table and the graph. And now let's look at our vertex, which is the point negative one nine. Since this graph is facing downwards, we will have a maximum at the point y equals nine, and our axis of symmetry will be at our x coordinate of our vertex, which is x equals negative one. Our horizontal shift shows that the vertex has moved one unit to the left, and our vertical shift of nine units up. Our domain again will be for all real numbers, and our range in this case will be at our maximum point, which is nine and anything less than that. So we will write this as y is less than or equal to nine. As said before, since this graph is a negative a value, this will be concave down, and this will also show a reflection over the x-axis. Remember, these transformations are based on our parent function. Your parent function is normally concave up. So therefore, if your new function is concave down, then that means there is a reflection over the x-axis. Since our a value is equal to one, there's no dilation. And then we can see that if we read our graph from left to right, it is first increasing from negative infinity to our vertex x-coordinate of negative one. And then it changes direction to decreasing from that x value of negative one to positive infinity.
Let's take a look at example three. Here is slightly different because your a value is going to be a half. So here you're given the function f at x equals negative one half times x minus one squared plus two. Again, first we're going to create our table and look for your pattern. Next we're going to look for our x intercepts, which in this case are negative one zero and three zero. Then we're going to look for our y-intercept, which in this case is 0, 1.5. And, and it's okay to have decimal values in your coordinate point. Then you will also see that your vertex is the point 1, 2. If you look in your original function or in your original equation, you can pinpoint your vertex because your equation is actually written in vertex form. Next, this also shows us that our maximum value is y equals 2 and our axis of symmetry is x equals 1. Your horizontal shift will be one unit to the right and your vertical shift is two units up. Again, this is all based on your vertex moving from your parent function vertex, which is 0, 0. Our domain, once again, will be all real numbers. And our range in this case will be y is less than or equal to 2, which happens to be our maximum point. This graph is concave down, which does represent a reflection over the x-axis. Now remember, I stated in the beginning that this a value was 1 half. So this shows that there is a dilation by a scale factor, which is 1 half, which makes your graph wider. Next, your increasing value will be from negative infinity to positive 1. And again, open bracket on infinity because it's excluded and closed bracket on positive 1 because it's included. Then, after the vertex, it will change direction to be decreasing from the positive 1 value to infinity. Let's take a look at our last example f at x is equal to 2 times x minus 4 all squared plus 3. After creating your table, you can clearly see that there still will be a y-intercept, even though on the graph there isn't one. If you notice, your graph does not touch the x-axis, therefore there are no x-intercepts. However, like I said, even though your graph does not touch the y-axis, on the table, you can clearly see that there still is a y-intercept, which is the point 0, 35. You can also pinpoint the vertex at 4, 3. Your minimum value is y equals 3, and your axis of symmetry is x equals 4. Next, you will see that the horizontal shift is 4 units to the right, and your vertical shift is 3 units up. Your domain, once again, will be all real numbers, and your range in this case will be y is greater than or equal to 3. This case, since your a value is a positive, it is going to be concave up, which also shows that there is no reflection. Now, since your a value in your equation is equal to 2, that means there is a dilation by a scale factor of 2, which is known as your graph becoming more narrow or narrower. Lastly, our decreasing value, as we read the graph from left to right, will be from negative infinity to our vertex x-coordinate of 4, and increasing starting at that x equals 4 point, moving on to positive infinity. I hope this clarified determining the key features of a quadratic graph. If you have any further questions, please comment below. Thank you for watching.